You've actually just put out a report, I was digging into it, and fascinated to see really companies should optimise their cloud infrastructure. This is what you're calling for. Is what Snap's doing optimising it or delaying? Uh, a little bit of both. So very clearly the bet on public cloud infrastructure is the popular emerging conventional wisdom now. Uh, public cloud is winning. It's faster, better, and cheaper than building it yourself in the vast majority of use cases. And we're seeing that across the board. The art then becomes optimizing for scale. At their cost structure, they're starting to do the refactoring, they're starting to do the optimization, and that matters given the P&L we're seeing. So the diversification going forward at Snap, what about some of the companies that are in your portfolio, the people that you're speaking to, the entrepreneurs? It's not just about their cloud infrastructure, but it's also about how they grow at the right rate, how they stop the burn in the wrong rate. What's the sweet spot? Uh, so it, it very much so is, this, this trade-off of growth versus burn. Over the last couple of years, we've seen the, seen the sensitivity to efficient growth. We at Bessemer have a BVP efficiency score, which we look at the ratio between the two, and what you see is that the best private companies can manage about a 70% efficiency score, meaning if they grow at 100%, they're burning about 30%. Mm. And then as they get to scale into the public markets, that trends down to the 50%, the 40%, the famous rule of 40, and then about 30% several years into their public life. And it was amazing just how quickly almost the, the half-life is now of getting to critical runway. We just saw I had Dropbox last week announce they had hit a billion dollars in terms of Absolutely. average revenue. They're getting there quicker and quicker and quicker. It, the, the bar keeps being raised. Part of the public cloud infrastructure advantage is that your engineering team can focus on adding value and going straight to product innovation instead of back end leverage. That creates huge flexibility and also they have infinite scale. You have these resources on demand and so there aren't bottlenecks technically anymore. And so it's all about building awesome product that gets in customers' hands and we're seeing the bar be raised. Twilio last year, one of the fastest companies ever to 100 million has blown past that into several hundreds of millions. Slack, Dropbox, et cetera, that is the new standard. So let's back it up a little bit. We're talking cloud companies that you're investing in, and you mentioned a bottleneck there. There was a bit of a bottleneck when it came to IPOs. We did have, of course, Twilio, but there were, that was a few and far between. It was a tough uh, last several years. So last year, 2016, the fewest IPOs since the financial crisis of 2008. Cloud in total since 2015 has only had a dozen IPOs. And this is the future of tech and the future of software. We were fortunate at Bessemer to be part of five of those, and so we had a front row seat. But it was a, a horrifically slow year where only the very best companies got out. That's created a backlog now of hundreds of high quality companies. The next hundred private right now are valued in the private markets at well over $100 billion collectively. That is the crop of shadow IPO candidates that we see queued up and ready to go as the market opens up. Put $100 billion in perspective, how big is cloud company market cap in general if we're looking globally, if we're looking public, private? Yes, so if you go across the pure play public cloud companies, about 300 billion, but 40% of that has been acquired within the last several years. So M&A has been rife while IPOs have been quiet. Absolutely, and they're related. So the market took a crap last year, pulled back dramatically is a technical term, 35% uh, down in cloud. That created the window of opportunity that the legacy vendors have been waiting for, a buying opportunity. $60 billion of cloud IPO happened, uh, M&A activity happened last year, four times the next highest average ever. LinkedIn was the largest deal by a wide multiple in history. History, and if you take them out, it still would have been a record year by 2x. And so what happened is M&A was crazy, IPOs froze, and there's this backlog now of great high quality private cloud companies waiting to go public that will reveal themselves in the coming quarters. So 2017, you're thinking, is going to be a much bigger than 2016. Could it be bigger than 2015 and 2016 combined? We're going to start to see it in the uh, end of the second quarter through the back half of the year. Essentially, the AppDynamics deal would have been one of the first. We thought that would have opened it up. Cisco had other plans, and credit to both of them, that was a fantastic deal. We absolutely believe in the latter half of the second quarter through to September um, through November, that window, we will see some great companies tap the markets.